Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great week. Uh, we are halfway through our series on Celebration of Discipline. It's a brilliant book by Richard Foster. And what we're doing is we're taking a different one of these disciplines every week and uh, exploring together what it looks like to live that out in our everyday lives. So this week it is Solitude, the Discipline of Solitude. We've got a blog up on the website, uh, onelifeleaders.com, uh, that you can check out if you haven't seen that. And we're putting blogs up every week for each one of these disciplines. And yeah, so this week it's Solitude. And uh, Richard Foster says at the start of the chapter that there's an inner solitude that we can live out uh, every day in our lives. It's a state of the mind and heart. But also there are these outward ways that we can live in solitude. And uh, we've summarised some of those that Richard Foster shares. Um, we've put those on, on the blog. Uh, but one of those is little solitudes. And it's these little moments in the day that we might not otherwise catch as being opportunities uh, for us to, um, to, to have a moment of solitude and being still and silent uh, and just being with God, being alone with God. So I've been trying to take some of those moments, uh, little times in the morning, uh, or when I'm out on my daily exercise and trying to practice it then. Um, and it has struck me that actually in this season of isolation and, and social distancing, uh, what an opportunity this could be for us to, um, to really grow in this practice or in all of these disciplines, but particularly in solitude, where we're not able to do some of the things that we might ordinarily do or see some of the people we might normally choose to see uh, and some of us have got some uh, spare time on our hands. What an opportunity this could be for us to really learn to grow in uh, this practice of solitude. Uh, another example of what uh, Richard Foster says about what we could do uh, to grow in this is to spend time uh, in a quiet place. Um, so sort of perhaps have a designated place in the, in the house or in the garden, maybe a bench in the garden or an armchair in the house where you can just spend time alone. So um, if, you've, if you're stuck in lockdown with other family members, perhaps you could let them know that, the, that when you're going to this, this place, uh, that you're just going to, to be alone just for a few minutes um, and, and just ask them just, yeah, just to leave you alone just for a few minutes, just so you can spend that time. So a few times this week, I've just gone to a chair in our house and have just um, tried to be still in God's presence, uh, just to be uh, alone with him uh, and to not come uh, necessarily with an agenda with lots of things to say to God, but just to be still and silent with him. And uh, I've, I've noticed I've had to be really intentional about not allowing myself to be a uh, distracted, so putting my phone out of the way and, uh, and closing my eyes has helped as well. And it's actually been really special and it has struck me that dedicating this time to just being uh, with God is not only uh, me uh, giving God attention but also a really special way of me uh, showing God uh, my affection for him as well. And there's loads of examples um, in the Bible, in the Gospels of Jesus just wanting to spend time alone with the Father. Uh, we see him wanting to get away from the crowds and just to seek out a quiet place uh, to be alone with the Father. And, uh, and that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to follow Jesus' example in this. Another thing I found really helpful in the chapter was Richard Foster linking solitude with silence. These two are really closely linked. And, uh, and he was saying how silence can bring us freedom as we're trusting God rather than our words. And he gives the example of us want, maybe wanting to use our words to build or defend our reputation. Uh, but choosing silence in those moments means that we're trusting God instead. And uh, that reminded me of the Psalm, uh, Psalm 38, verses 12 to 15, which says, Those who seek my hurt speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like a deaf man. I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. 
There are a few other quotes that I'd just love to share from the book. Uh, one we shared earlier in the week, uh, which summarises it so well. In solitude, we are freed from our bondage to people and our inner compulsions. And we are freed to love God and know compassion for others. And it also says, in solitude, we die not only to others, but also ourselves. It is out of our liberation from others and self that our ears become open to hear and our eyes unveiled to see the goodness of God. Through our solitude, an open inner space has been created through which God finds us. And the last one, God takes this useless discipline, this wasted time, to make us his friend. And it's so interesting, isn't it, how um, naturally we might think of this as being wasted time, where we're just being alone and, uh, and still and silent. Uh, but actually, this is what w it's really important that we spend our time doing. And, uh, and, and when we practice doing it, it's actually the other things, perhaps, that we spend our time doing that might seem like wasted time. We'd love to know how you've been finding a uh, Celebration of Discipline series that we've been doing and uh, maybe this Discipline of Solitude uh, if you've been practicing that this week. Um, so if you'd want to leave us a comment uh, or send us an email at info at onelifeleaders.com that would be great. Have a great weekend guys.